Greetings, it's Ian Famatio here. Welcome to another dark and dingy day in Northampton. It's full lights this morning. <laughs> it's not very light out there. Even some of the night lights across the road are still on. That's how dark it is. So, it's Ladies' Day today. It's a week early because of Christmas. And today we've got two British singers. Both had were in successful duo bands. Went on to solo. Uh, so the first person we're going to look at today is Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox was born on the 25th of December 1954, so it's her birthday next week. And she has got an OBE. Uh, she started in the late 70s, of course, in a band called The Tourists, where she met fellow musician Dave Stewart. After The Tourists split up, they formed Eurythmics. Uh very very successful duo iconic songs like sweet dreams and that bright orange air uh, she's once they spit up though she's had a very successful um, solo career and has made six albums so we'll have a look at the solo albums of Annie Lennox so coming in at number six this was released in 2010, and it's for this time of year. It's called Christmas Corn Oak Corn Copia, and uh, it's a collection of Annie's favourite Christmas songs, and includes one original track. So on here, Annie Lennox plays loads of instruments from an accordion to African drums to a triangle and a Wurlitzer. Mike Stevens plays bass, glockenspiel, Hammond organ, African drums, and just the string arrangements. Uh, Barry Van Zyl does African drums, and we got the African Children's Choir doing some singing as well. The first track is a, a traditional uh, carol, Angels of the Realms of Glory. I sometimes don't like what pop stars do to... Um, more traditional carols I'm not very keen on them you know they should be left for what they are Christmas carols so I'm not too keen on that then she does God rest ye merry gentlemen I like this I just don't like it the arrangement it doesn't sound right um, a lot of some people like it but I don't then we have uh, see amid the winter s snow now this is nice She's kept it in the traditional way, and there's a nice little bit of accordion in it. Um, I quite like that. Then we have a French Karen, and it's El Nier de Van Enfant. Oh, I don't like this. I've heard an a, like an original version of it. It just doesn't uh, sit with me, I'm afraid. The First Noel, one of my favourite Christmas carols, and again, I just don't like how she's arranged it. it I don't like it jazzed up and popped up. I really don't. Then we have Love Lullaby, Lullaby, the Coventry Carol. This isn't too bad. I haven't. I've heard worse versions of that. Um, then she does the Holly and the Ivy. It's a nice version. I think she does a good job on that one. And then we get In the Bleak Midwinter. She doesn't do a bad version of that. As Joseph was walking, the cherry cherry carol. Uh, it's alright. Um, oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. I do like this version. It's quite pleasant and it sort of sticks to its traditions. Uh, Silent Night. Nah, I don't like this version at all. My favourite carol. And it just doesn't sound right. But my favourite track on here is the, her own track, The Universal Child. Lovely little track. Um, I don't mind that at all. Okay, um, it's a Christmas album, but what I don't like, the carols, I don't, I don't like jazz carols, uh, traditional carols, jazzed up, made poppy. I'm very much of a traditional when it comes to carols. But I do like the track that she did. She did one or two of them nicely. So I'll also give this an RTO ranking of 3 out of 10. Okay, then coming at number 5, we have the second album released in 1995. And it's called Medusa. 
and it consists of cover songs. Very successful, it got to number one in the charts. First track is a track by The Lover Speaks, No More I Love Yous. This was a big hit. I like this version of this song, one of my favourite songs by Annie at Lennox. And I do like the original as well, but I, I think uh, Annie does a fine job on that one. Then we have an Al Green song, Take Me to the River. Really good version of it. Does it justice. Very good track. Uh, then she does Procol Harum's A Whiter Shade of Pile. Pile. I love this version of it. It's my favourite track on the album. Uh, one of my favourite tracks again done by Annie Lennox. Then we have a Neil Young song of Don't Let It Bring You Down. Not a bad version actually. Um, but Neil's is better. Then we have Train in Vain, a class song. What? I don't like it. What was she thinking? <laughs> Leave these sort of songs to punks. <laughs> it's a great song by The Clash, but Annie, no. Then we get a Temptations track called I Can't Get Next to You. I just don't like this version. It just doesn't sound right. Downtown Lights, which is the Blue Nile. I'm not a fan of this song, and I'm not a fan of Vanny's version either. Um, then we have a track by The Persuaders, The Thin Line Between Love and Hate. She does a reasonable job of this. It's a good song, and that she does a very good version of it. Then we have Waiting in Vain by Bob Marley. It's not too bad. Then she's the last track is Something So Right, which is Paul Simon, and she does pretty good version of this one of the high points on the album yeah just a typical covers album some work some don't but there's a lot to do on this one she did some good stuff on this one so i'm going to give this an rto ranking of six out of ten okay then coming in at number four we have the debut album from 1992 and it is called diva First track is my favourite track. Why? One of the best ever songs Annie Lennox recorded. Lovely vocals, excellent melody. I love that track. Walking on Broken Glass, another of my favourite tracks on here. It was in my top 10 songs of Annie Lennox when I did a retro ranking on her. I think it's a piano's good on this. I love this. It's a quirky little number. Then we get Precious. I like the style of it. Uh, there's mu not much. It's a bit drab. But once it gets going, it's a good little track. Okay, then we got Legend in My Living Room. Not too bad. Catchy tune. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, cold, fine vocal from Annie on this. Uh, but the sock itself's a bit lacklustin in places. Money can't buy it. Oh dear, very poppy, generated um, pop sound. Little Bird, my second favourite track on here. I think this is such a very underrated track. Um, one of the deep cut tracks on this album. Primitive, the drum machine's okay, it's a nice vocal. Annie's got a nice voice anyway, she can make anything sound good. Except on Stay By Me, it, get rid of the horrible percussion. It's too too poppy. It needs to be more of a jazzy percussion in my books. Then we get The Gift, which is the last track. It's all right. Um, just, just typical sort of poppy sort of thing. It's not a bad debut album. It's got some nice tracks on it. But they are some that sound very repetitive in the sound. It's that generated percussion that really lets it down in places. But um, Little Bird and White are the outstanding tracks on this one. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.2. Okay then, coming in at number 3. It's the third album from 2003 and it's called Bear. Now one here, Annie Lennox does the vocals and keyboards. Stephen Lipson keyboards and guitars. 
Peter John Fatisse on keyboards, Stephen Seidlick on additional guitars, like Dave Arranger, and Tim at Cansfield additional guitars. The first track on here is my favourite track, and again, one of my favourite tracks by Annie, and it's A Thousand Beautiful Things. I don't know why this didn't chart, because it is a, a single, it's a really nice song. Lovely harmonies, wonderful. Then we get another of my favourite tracks, Pavement Cracks. So daunting, so sultry, uh, especially at the beginning. Um, absolutely killer track. The Hurting Time, ah, oh, wonderful track. Very jazzy sound, smoke rooms, big microphones, speakeasy sort of thing. Very, very good track. Honestly, is the next one. A fantastic vocal from Annie on this. Very simple songs, and I think simple songs always are the best. Wonderful comes next. It's all right, but it doesn't belong up what's going on on the album. It sort of is a bit of a left field. It's okay. Bitter Pill as a very quirky little song. Um, I love the keyboard arrangements in this. It's excellent. Then we get Loneliness. Good of arrangement great vocal again um, very good song the saddest song I've got not a great lover of this it's a little bit drab for me um, erased wrong sort of percussion again get rid of that tin pot machine and put a jazzy sort of shuffle on it and it'd be a far better song twisted it's okay oh god prayer it's all right bit of a filler track for me doesn't do much for me very good album um, I've really enjoyed listening to this one um, it's got some good tracks on it some other jazzy sort of sound so I'm gonna give this an RTO ranking of 7.5 okay coming in number two we have the sixth and most current album released in 2014 and it's just called Nostalgia and it's an entire album of cover versions of compositions from the great American songbook. Uh, most of them from the 30s, a couple from the um, 50s. The material was researched and learned by Annie Lennox. She studied archival footage to upload to Annie Lennox's um, page. So she does the vocals, Mike Stevens does accordion and organ, Chris Hill's on the bass, Ivan Hussey on cello, Neil Wickinson drums, Nicole Thompson trombone, Simon Finch on the trumpet, so Stephen Hussey viola, viola, viola and violin, Richard Brook on percussion. So the first track is Memphis in June, written by Paul Francis and Rugg. Webster, Hoagie, Carmichael, brilliant song, and she does a brilliant version of it. Georgia on my mind, fantastic song. Um, this is this, this track. You'll if you don't know the the title, you'll know the tune. You used to introduce, there's a version of it that introduces the Harlem Globetrotters. Really good song. Then she does an absolute belter version of "I Put a Spell on You." By screaming Jay Hawkins, absolutely killer of a track. One of the best versions you'll ever hear. Then we get Summertime, which is a George Gershwin number. I love this song. Uh, beautifully written by George Gershwin. George Gershwin and sung beautifully by Annie Lennox. I cover the waterfront is next. Great version of this song. It's just one of them speakeasy bar sort of songs big microphones against smoky rooms the piano on this is nice and of course Annie sings it so well then we have a strange fruit it's okay version and then there's Billy the holidays God bless the child uh, made very famous by Billy holiday and it's a great version of it you belong to me another great classic I love the brush drums on this. I love the little brushes that just just love this riff. September in the Rain. One of my granddad's favourite songs. Uh, 
I've heard lots of people singing it, and I think she does a fine version of it. I can dream, can't I? Love the piano and accordion working on this. It's a lovely song, and it's a very good interpretation of it, and a great vocal by Annie. Uh, in the nearest of views next, Simplicity at its best. Great track. And then Mood Indigo by Duke Ellington. I love this. Double bass, simple guitar and a great vocal. I love this album. Um, I love this American Songbook songs. Uh, she does some all justice on here. And I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.8. But the number one for me is a fourth album from 2007. And it's Songs of Mass Destruction. First track is my favourite track on here. It's a beautiful song called Dark Road. Outstanding. It didn't get in the charts. It should have done because it's a fantastic song. But there was so much. The thing was at the time there was so much rubbish in the charts that was terrible. And this didn't look get looking. It's a quality song. Love is Blind comes next. Love this song as well. Uh, it's, a, it's just got such a versatile voice. It's a little bit more rocky. Great track. Um, Smithereens. Um, the, probably the weakest track on here, but it's still a very good track. It just lacks a little bit of something in there. Ghost in Machines. Another a rocky sort of track. Upbeat. Very good. Womankind, bit poppy. Um, a little bit too poppy for the this part of a career. Leave that to the kids. You should concentrate on some nice songs. Um, Through the Glass Darkly. Nothing wrong with this one. It's a really super song. Lost. Lovely strings in this. Like that one as well. Coloured. Bedspread. I like the story behind this. I love storytelling songs. So they've got a bit of a poppy groove, but it's a really good song. And then we get Sing. A little bit political, but it's okay. Big Sky. The, the percussion at the end sounds a bit muffled, but it's a very strong vocal from Annie. Uh, Fingernail Moon is the last... I love this. It's just a very simple tra piano track. And a great husky sort of voice from Annie. I love this. Very, very good album. Uh, it's the best of her own material, without a doubt. It's got a good mixture. There's a little bit of pop in there, some sultry. A bit of a sort of an American songbook feel to it as well. It's a good all-round album for me. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. So there we go. A little bit of uh, Annie Lennox, one of the finest female songwriters and performers. This, uh, well, she's she's Scottish, but from the Brit United Kingdom, she has um, done it all, and uh, we wish her a happy birthday on Christmas Day. Okay, up next, retro ranking. Uh, I'm going to pick my favourite songs by another British artist. Um, Started off in a duo, went um, solo. Sort of went down the same sort of route as Annie in some of her material. And that's Alison Moyet. So that's coming up very soon. Bye for now. <laughs> 